has to be storage tiering. The new storage tiering in Windows Server 2012 R2 is just simply fantastic. It allows us to greatly reduce the cost per IOP and deliver fantastic performance. Um, two would have to be all the work that we're doing in terms of Hyper-V and live migration. We've made some massive improvements in terms of live migration with compression, live migration using SMB Direct and RDMA, and now cross-version live migration, so I can live migrate from Server 2012 to 2012 R2. So all those live migration technologies make life so much easier. And the third one, honestly, it's just so hard. There's so many different things to go with. I'd probably go with one thing that jumps to mind is the new multi-tenant gateway that we've also introduced. So we introduced network virtualization in Server 2012. Well, now we're providing a multi-tenant gateway. So for example, a cloud service provider who has multi multiple customers that wants to be able to, to, to provide multi-tenant network virtualization services can do that using our inbox multi-tenant gateway. These are just a few that come to mind. Well, first of all, we're, so we're, we're, at, we're going out of our way to make sure it's really easy to do that. In fact, the cross-version live migration is one of a, a perfect example of doing that. We want to make sure that if someone, for example, has deployed a, a 2012 cloud using Hyper-V, they can literally drag and drop their Hyper-V VMs from 2012 to a share-nothing live migration right onto a 2012 R2 cluster, and those VMs just live migrate onto the new cluster. Now, because of the fact you're running 2012 R2 on the cloud, on cloud infrastructure, you get to take advantage of all those new capabilities for us, such as storage tiering, deduplication, multi-tenant gateway, network virtualization. Those just all come as you transparently move your virtual machine. So basically, it's a, it's a non-disruptive cloud infrastructure upgrade with Server 2012 R2. So, live migration compression is a, a fantastic new feature in Windows Server 2012 R2. In fact, it's the new default. So, when you're doing live migration, it will default to using this setting. And the reason why is quite simply, we have an abundance of cores. Um, servers have long been shipping now with at least four cores and symmetric multi-threading. Now it's even higher. Um, but we, we generally, most servers don't run fully compute bound. There's always some additional compute, always a spare. So what we're essentially doing is taking a little bit of compute, using it to compress the memory uh, of the virtual machine so that there's less to actually have to live migrate. So for example, in the demonstration I showed this morning, I believe doing a virtual machine where I was, it was an eight gigabyte VM running a SQL workload under heavy load. So the memory inside the VM was actually churning pretty hard. And using 2012, live, live migrating between 2012 to 2012, I believe it took about a minute and a half. With compression, the same exact VM, same exact hardware, same exact test, I believe it took like 30 something seconds. So what you're seeing is, you know, we're using just a little bit extra uh, compute, we're able to compress that down and, and, and make that live migration happen. So, you know, again, it's just one of those, hey, we're looking at the system holistically, and from a server perspective, we have so many cores, so let's use a little bit more and actually dramatically reduce the live migration time. Okay.